Hey everybody, Nigel Reeve and Nigel's Modeling Bench, welcome back to the channel. And here we are now with part 10 of the build of this uh, Hobby Boss Scammel and we're working our way through the trailer. And my god, it's um, yeah, <laughs> let's not say any more about it. So, I have done a little bit of work off camera. Um, so these are the actual feet for the trailer supports. Uh, you can see them in the instructions here. There's a pad that goes on the bottom, you've got the two sides rod and it goes into these, these uprights here. Um, if you remember at the end of part 9, I realised I'd fitted these in the wrong position and I had to do some modification to get them to fit properly. And they're basically in there now. What's really annoying is I've fitted these. You can see in the instructions here, it's a very, very similar thing. In fact, those are A31 and these are A32. They're very similar. Um, and they go into these slots in this cross member and that cross member has actual slots in it that they go into so you sort of know now where they go how how far in they go and how deep they go whereas with this one it was just nothing at all so uh, if you saw part nine you will notice some notes in there where I said oh well, I've got this wrong and everything um, and that was what I'd actually done wrong so there we go so that's all it's all correct now. You can see they they go in so that all the um, pivots are in line. I don't know why I didn't think of that. But, uh, and I just I don't even know. I'm looking back now and I don't even know why I fitted them so high. It was just stupid. But um, there you go. So you know what to do now when you build yours. Um, and of course now that we've done that, we've got full articulation with them. Uh, so I've done these, and these go into the cross member nice and properly, and those arms can pivot up. Just like that. So I did that before I did the anything else because I wanted to get them done. Um, I've also fitted this rear cross member here. This is the main support for the for the rear wheel with the trailer wheels, and then fitted these end parts. And what's very strange here is you've got here you've got C41, and opposite is N11, and it's almost like it's like somebody said, "Hang on, we've only got one um, part," and, and there seems to be a lot of parts that are. C and then the opposite is N. It's like it's like N was an afterthought. So that is the little N sprue. So uh, yeah, very strange. Um, so done that. Check my references and these end pieces. When you fit them, they have like a they're, they're sticking out all the way around. I check my references and it's supposed to be smooth. It's, there's no weld there or step or anything. So I've just blended those out on the ends. I still haven't glued the rear of the. The rails in because I'm not sure about their position. I'm not sure if they're going to end up being level there or if they're going to go inside it like that. So I don't know if they're going to go inside like that or if they're going to be level. I think they're going to be level but uh, we'll find out when we fit something back here I guess. So I then looked, started looking at fitting the gooseneck. Well the first thing I noticed I had a big issue. I couldn't get it to go back far enough. What I noticed was you've got these round parts here on the front of the trailer. And you had these round parts here, but at the bottom there was a, a straight, you probably see where I filed them out. On the bottom it was going, it was straight across. So I just filed away that plastic and now that has allowed it to go in. And if you push it from underneath, as you can see, we can get a perfect join there. Now it's absolutely seamless along there. And that allows it to go back further in the middle. So um, that's something I'd recommend. The other thing I noticed when it went together, it all fits lovely. But there was quite a gap here. There, so you can see what I've done. I've added some 0.5 plastic card, just a strip of it, and then trimmed and sanded it on the sides. So I've added some 0.5 plastic card in there to um to fill that gap. And then when it goes together, as you'll see here, when it goes together, we end up with a nice seamless joint. So uh, that's much nicer. So um, there's that. Obviously we've got to check that it's all square and everything before we start gluing anything up. The other thing I did was also sanded some of this away here because if you remember this was sticking out. In fact it's still sticking out a touch there. So I'll just take a bit more off of there. Today is the 21st of June 2023 and it's a couple of days after well, it's three days, isn't it, after the um, the terrible loss of this underwater submersible by near the Titanic. And uh, 
I'm hoping that by now, by the time we get this video, that there's, they've, they've found them and rescued them and they're surviving. Um, however, I'm not sure that that's the case. It's going to be the case. Um, my, my, my prediction is I, th I think it imploded, on, to be honest. Um, I think that was my... I think that's my prediction. So if this video goes out next week sometime and I'm proven wrong, then I'm proven wrong. But the one question I ask myself... I've not seen anybody else mention, surely if it imploded, then the whole thing would have just been ripped to pieces in, in milliseconds. There would have been oxygen tanks, all sorts of cylinders, all sorts of bits and pieces that would have retained oxygen, retained air. They would have floated to the surface. They, they would have found debris floating on the surface. Surely. Surely. I mean, there must have been oxygen tanks and they wouldn't have imploded. But um, I guess if they did um, break and they broke the supply from the oxygen tank, then the oxygen tank would have just leaked out into the water. I, I don't know. But uh, let's hope I'm completely wrong. And by, ne by the time you see this video, there's been a successful rescue. But just now I heard on the news that apparently they've heard some, some knocking. So but, uh, there's a lot of professionals saying that that probably is just the Titanic moving around. Or parts of the Titanic moving around. So uh, anyway... Um, so with this trailer, obviously that's going to go together and you can see it's going to fit beautifully. It's going to go together lovely. OK, so um, what I want to do now is get this in, but I'm not sure about its position. So what I'm going to do is put that in there like that. And not glue it and then fit this in here. Where the difficulty comes, you've got these these bits here sticking out on the sides. They've got to go into here. So you've got to sort of manipulate everything and get it to push in and you'll hear it kind of, there you go. You'll hear it sort of clip in. No, it hasn't gone in. There we go, that's gone in now. That's gone in. We can push the middle back. So we can get the gooseneck to fit nicely and then concentrate on that afterwards. Because this, obviously it's got to be vertical. But I, I want to get the gooseneck, I want to get this seam here nice before I start messing with anything else. And I know that it would have weld seams and stuff on it, but I don't want to get any glue oozing out. You can see there that's gone together lovely. And I think what I'm going to do, oh dear, <laughs> I'm going to do this off camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tape it up or clamp it up or something. Um, but I'll get it all get done off camera and then we'll get some glue on there. Okay, so I went on <clears throat> and glued it together because I wasn't exactly sure what was going on. But um, what I've done, I've left this cross member here that these legs are on is not glued in. It's just floating. And the reason I've done that was because I wasn't sure if you just glue it in. Sorry, cement it in as they show you there when, when you build up this gooseneck. If you just glue it in then, you, there is no indication of what angle it goes on. This, this trailer really is bad. Oops, and I'm chucking it across the bench. Um, it, it really is bad. So, basically there's no indication as to how that should go. So, what I've, what I've done is left it loose. And what I've discovered is because it's loose, I can fold these arms up out of the way and tape them so that I can still work on the chassis. You know, on the on the trailer without having these legs sticking out. Um, you can't put that in after I've tried it. It will not go in. You, you have to put it in at the same time as the gooseneck. Uh, but as I say, it's not glued. It's, it's still loose. But if I actually had it fixed in position, like in its correct place, like that, those legs would be, I wouldn't be able to fold those legs down. They'd be sticking up, and I'd probably snap them off. So, with it out of position, we can put those legs back and have the trailer flat. So we could leave that until we want to have those legs sticking out. Um, now, I've glued around here. And I've glued down there. I obviously haven't glued the bottoms because there's tape on there. And I'm going to let that all sort, of sort itself out. Um, and I'm going to pop out. I've got to take Jess to the vets for an appointment. So get that sorted out so while I'm gone that could be sorting itself out and drying out so we've got a nice lot of tamiya extra thin in there good weld action going on nice and strong 
so uh, that will be good and that needs to be really strong obviously because obviously all the weight you put on there is leaving on there and it will just snap off so and we can see here if we get the truck chassis we put the trailer on you can see we've got quite a quite a rig going on here it's um how long is it do, 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 do. get the pin in the fifth wheel uh, let's move that up let's move that back it is 540 millimeters long so I guess with the ramps on the back it'll be a little bit longer but it's probably gonna be 550 so um, it's quite a big old thing but easy to display because it's narrow you could just have it on a shelf so uh, here we go right I'll let that go off take Jess to the vets and then I'll see you when I come back and we're back and <clears throat> in the meantime I've taken the tape off the bottom and glued those at the bottom with super glue the uh, VMS black thin which you know is my favorite gap filler now and I've basically filled those gaps there so as you can see we've got a nice clean joint so that gooseneck is on there nice and strong so that's all good so now I'd like to look at this part of the instructions on getting these legs extended so I'll take this tape off this tape is holding those legs from dangling around because when I pick it up they just fall down as you can see so they're going to come over like so. I'm not going to glue this cross member in yet until I've done all this. So they're going to fold up there, they're going to fold up there. And then we've got these feet over here that go on. So we're going to take one of these and one of these. And they are going on that way round. So that's going to go into there. That's going to go into there. Then wrong one night stupid boy that's going to go into there that's going to go into there and then that one will go into that's a shame now see I've put this so you've got this grab handle here the pin I've put it on an angle and that means this won't go in so I'm going to have to take this away and with my tweezers, see if I can bend that out of the way and make it look like it's been damaged rather than wreck it. I wonder if I put some extra thin, maybe it will unglue it. And I'll be able to turn it. So there's another little tip for you guys. If you go to one of these, put these on the horizontal. See if that will go in now. So back one onto there. That one onto there looks like it's going to be okay. And then we'll take this one, the back one onto there, that one onto there, and then that should go. Into there. Okay, so that doesn't really want to go together very well. So now we're going to place this base more problems now. It's like this is too wide or something. It's like this leg is too wide. You can see it doesn't want to go together. I'll try and hold that together and get this to go on. No way. Just grab my calipers. 
a 6.6 and a 6.6 so I see no reason why it shouldn't go on let's try this same setup on this side Seems the goods get a lot better. I can't believe it's just because of that pin. Yeah, that's gone on now. But it keeps wanting to ping off. Make life a lot easier here. Is if we pull, take this out of here. I'm leaving the camera on so you can watch me struggle. Oh God, it doesn't want to come out now. Ah. Right, it might be a lot easier to do it this way. Put that on there. fumble fingers. We'll put that on there. We'll put that on there. It doesn't want to stay in there. And then we'll put this in there. Get it to go between those pins. I think what I'm going to do is put a drop of extra thin on here and then put a peg on it. In an attempt to hold it together. And I'll do the same on this one then I'll come back. And there we go, as you can see, I'm going to leave those out to dry now and that little pin hold them in place and hopefully then it'll be easier to get those on and we should be able to get under there and um, clamp them in position I'm assuming I'll still be able to get this all back together even with these on but, uh, oh yeah if not I'll just cut it all up <laughs> I'm, I'm getting quite fed up with it to be quite honest with you guys um, that's come out of there now look. so there we go right I'll let that dry as I say and then I'll be back and we'll see if we can get these plates on the bottom and then we'll have to fill in those the marks left from those holes as well. Oh, there we go that was fiddly but it's gone together but they didn't want to go together but uh, they have so that's the way they've gone. Um, looking at this I can see these two are sort of splayed out but it's the inner one that's worse I don't care I'm beyond giving up it's, I'm, it's just crazy. So um, anyway of course, I was thinking after, afterwards, this won't affect the model in reality because they would never be pushed right down like they were when I was trying to put it all together. So, uh, so there we go. Um, still not going to glue that cross member in yet because if I glue the cross member in, you'll see we lose we lose a lot of movement on those. Look, if I pull it up a touch, they can swivel around. If I put it down in its right place, they can't. So. We need to make sure that we uh, have it all together before we do that. So we'll leave that cross member up. So again, I'm going to leave that to dry now. Um, if you're looking at these closed pegs and thinking, how on earth have I done that? They are ordinary wooden closed pegs, just like this. Okay, and what you'll find is these is you you don't get a lot of clamping force on there. You don't get a lot of clamping force at all. Um, so these are really handy. Um, I learned this off a guy on a YouTube video many years ago, a guy from Bristol, and I've forgotten his name. So basically all you do is you take the peg apart like I just did there, you turn it around and you put you put the spring into that hole there. And now you have a much better clamping force. 
and also these are really handy because unlike most clamps when you clamp you kind of have this scissor action so you're kind of doing this whereas with these when you've got something like that as you can see here it's parallel so I think what I might do actually is find another one like that one there we go another one with the bigger spring in it I think I'll swap that one over there we go so they can dry like that and that's basically how you do those and um, they work really really well and they're really handy if you want to get into like a tight space if you want to clamp something onto there say they're really handy because they've got such a thin end so there we go I need to do a beginner's video don't know about clamping it's a good idea okay we're back I've done a bit off camera this is the next day now so we've got those all those unclamped and everything we've got those slots filled in with super glue, so sanded down nicely and I've got them pushed in there and I've pushed them as low as they'll go but it's all as you can see it's all still movable and everything so that's all good so um, that's the trailer part done moving on in the instructions we have the bogey and the wheel construction so the bogies are together so remember I've glued these together a while back I've used super glue to fill in the gaps to Full of sink marks in there so uh, got those all sanded out uh, and then fitted these mounts and the air cylinders for the brakes and then what I've done is just taken a couple of wheels and just placed them on just as a visual guide to check they're all square and everything and in the middle it's not really that important you're not really going to be seeing any of it but you know it's modeling at the end of the day and we want to get it right so uh, that's all good but um you know, I would have thought there would have been on these parts some sort of directional position to get them right. You just have to basically look for the seam and get the seam vertical. Because uh, as you can see, they've got like a, a wedge shape on them. These bits here have no real positive location. They just stick on the top. So um, get those on and go for it. <laughs> um, the end caps on here as well. So that's all good. So basically that's about that. Um, wheels wise the inner wheels are quite simple they're just like an inner face sorry that's the inner face there and then you've got this face here with all the bolt detail on not really sure why they've gone to all that trouble with the bolt detail because when you put it together you can't see the bolt detail but on the back face that you can see there's absolutely nothing so a bit strange um, and also if you remember in my review I talked about these wheels being horrible they have five ejector pin marks in each one as you can see there which are not very nice at all but what I have found is the best thing to do is to come along with a just with some extra thin and just brush it over there just brush it over those ejector pin marks and they seem to pretty much disappear pretty much we'll have to see what I like I'll have to give them a cut of Mr. Surfacer and see how they look um, but the one thing about these wheels that is pretty ghastly is when you put these together, you can see you've got this, that part there, you've got the ones with the pin on the back and ones with the hole on the back. You've got this one with the pin, which is the inner wheel, and then the outer wheel has the hole. Again, you've got the bolt detail on there, which you can't see when it's all together. Um, well, not, you can't really see it. But you've got these ejector pin marks in the back face. And you can see where they've snapped off the, the Z pins. So you need to sand all that. And then you get this together. And what you've got is a wheel with slots in it that are blanked off by that bloody plastic face. So what I've done is taken the wheel and marked out, scratched through where the slots are. And then come along with a, with a pointed tool. And just made a hole like so or a dent like so so that I can pick up on the center and then Mr. Unprepared doesn't have his drill ready I'll just come along with a drill see 0.7 something like 0.8 whatever 0.75 just grab something small as a pilot and then get that into there And then pick up on that 
pin mark without drilling my fingers. Just drill through like so and then I have noticed that the, the actual slot is about 1.4 millimeters sort of wide or high or whatever you want to call it. So here we can go through there with our 1.4 millimeter drill just like so and then I'm going to go into the center in fact I'll make a make a kind of pin mark in the center there. Should have drilled a third hole, shouldn't I really, with the 0.7 drill, never mind. And just go through like so. And then we've got our three holes there. And then with a modeling knife, making sure my fingers aren't behind or put it down on the bench, long knife. And just cut away that bit in the middle. It doesn't need to be perfect because you're not going to see any of this. Just cut that out of there. There we go. We can push that through and then clean it out just like so. Clean that out so it's all clear like that and then when we put the wheel on we can line that up and as you can see we have an open slot compared to the others with that horrible backing slot and I've done one Blue Peter style so you can see there we've got the the wheel open you can see on the back the slots there and that looks a lot better if you look at this one which is all blocked off you know you fit that onto there and all you can see is just a blank face but if you look at this one look how much better that looks if I hold the two up next to each other I think that's a massive improvement over the over the standard kit parts the only bit we've got to overcome then is those, I don't want to say a far worse word, but those useless, bloody, stupidly positioned, bloody ejector pin marks. Really, really annoying why they did that. So uh, there we go. So anyway, I'll um, get the rest of the wheels done, then I'll come back and we'll see how they look. Okay, so moving on here, um, done a little bit of work off camera. Got these wheels sprayed black because now obviously we've got these holes in these wheels. When we put them on, you're going to see through. So if you had them like that, you're going to see through to the tan kind of plastic. So paint the wheel black behind, paint that in there black behind, and then we can glue them together. And when you spray it, if you get some green overspray through, it doesn't matter because they would have been painted green anyway. As for the ejector pin marks, what I initially did was put Mr. Surfacer in there, 1200, let it go off and then went in with a cotton bud with uh, leveling thinners and just tried to remove it and leave it as flat as I possibly could. And then what I've done, I've got a piece of, got a little piece of um, emery, not emery, yeah, wet and dry, and just folded it up like that. And then with a pair, a pair of blunt tweezers, they must be blunt, you don't want pointed ones because they'll go through, and just put a sort of curve in it. So it's got a sort of radius on it like that as you can see and then come in and just lightly sand over that Mr. Surfacer until you end up with a sort of flattish surface. What I'm going to do now with these is paint them black and see how they look. Because if they look okay with the black they'll probably look okay under the green and we're going to be putting some dust and stuff on them anyway. But um, one of these has come out really nice, uh, that one there. Obviously, if you if you drill all your holes, you might be wondering why I've done all eight wheels because four of them are going to be in here facing each other. You're not going to see the holes. But the reason I've done it is I can choose the four best ones for the outside, depending on how the ejector pin marks come out. 
I'm going to put that one back on there. So I'm going to go and paint all these black now and see how they look. Um, and then if I do see any marks, what we'll do is we'll put some more grey mist surfacer in there and then sand it and we can see what we're doing because we're working on grey, black and tan. So uh, if we can get that, if we can get them like that, then that'll be great. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not going to make resin wheels. Um, these wheels are horrible, they're awful. Um, no, no way, the tyres aren't very nice either. So if you really want something nice for your scammel, wait for somebody to come out of the aftermarket, if they ever do. I'm not sure this kit's going to be very popular with the aftermarket because I don't think it's going to be very popular as a kit to sell because it is so, so expensive, as I keep saying. They need, they need to bring the price down to £100 and then I think people might buy it. But um, I should imagine that there's really no other country in the world, maybe Jordan, <laughs> that's got much interest in this scammel. So we shall see. But there we go. So, uh, and I've just made my video about my spare wheel and my scammel badge and number plates as well. So have a look at that. So I'll see you soon. I'll, I'll, I'll see you soon. I'll get this painted and I'll be back. Okay, so it's bad news, I'm afraid, guys. If you look at those wheels, you can see Ejector Pin City. So we're going to have to put some more Mr. Surface in and sand it out. But obviously, as long as we get four good ones for the outside, the inner ones don't matter because you're not really going to see them. But um, yeah, so that one there is really bad. That one's really bad. That's not too bad. That one's bleh. that one's really bad. So it looks like we might have four half decent ones there. So um, as I say, it's worth doing all of them um, to see what's going on. And I'm so glad I did the cutting out of the back because that just looks so much better. When you look at it like that, it looks so much better that you can see through it. It's not so good on the camera because the lighting's not so good and it's all black and everything. But when it's green, believe me, it will look better. And if you've got bright light shining here, you will see the light coming through. Like if I put... I put a light there. Where are we? Where are we? <laughs> I put a light there. You can see the light coming through the holes. Look. So, well worth doing. So, um, we will uh, carry on. Keep pushing forward. So, I'll see you again in a minute. Okay, then here we are a few hours later. And as you can see, we've got some Mr. Surfacer in them. Has any forward done in that one? Got Mr. Surfacer carefully just puddled into those holes and allowed to dry. I spent 24 hours of let that dry. With Mr. Surfacer, it's quite quite important to let it dry for a while. Just going to take my piece of wet and dry paper there in the tweezers and then go round and just lightly just sand away until we see tan coloured plastic on either side and then we should end up with a sort of fairly nice flat face. Now if any manufacturers are watching this, kit manufacturers, if you know any kit manufacturers, can you please tell them that doing stuff like this is just a complete and utter needless pathetic stupid exercise. I mean what they could have done is made this this central hub here, we've got the bearing, that bearing cap, they could have made that as a separate part that goes in and put one big ejector pin in the middle. Um, you know, they could have made the complete centre as an ejector pin. But what they've done here is just totally and utterly ridiculous. They could have made it a flat disc, you know, so that it would come out of the mould easier than you wouldn't need an ejector pin and a separate rim going on the outside. There's a lot of different ways they could have done this and avoided having these bloody ejector pins in this position. It is so, so annoying and will absolutely ruin your £150 model. So now here's a couple that I've painted. Look at this one first. This one's not too bad. Can't really get the light a bit better. So it's looking at it. There we go. So this one's not too bad. You can see there in the reflections, you can see some some witnesses there, but it's nothing too much. This one, however, isn't so good. Um, I can catch it in the light. You can see that one there about, uh, about 10, 11 o'clock. You can see that one's not very good at all. But I, mean, I should be able to go over and just sand it again. Um, it's a shame, actually, that I love using Black Mr. Services so much because it just completely annihilates any quality of filming. 
well, quality and filming is not something that goes together. I'm just not two words that go together well on this channel, are they? But um, I could just come in with my wet and dry paper on the tweezers and just get in and sand that. I'm making a bit of a fuss about this because somebody did ask, I can't remember who you were now, sorry, but somebody did ask, I think it was when I reviewed the kit, if I could actually specifically show you how to deal with these ridiculously positioned ejector pin marks. I got a feeling we had the same with the um, M1070 in the trailer. For, that was again from Hobby Boss and I, with that we didn't have them so close to the bolt so I I kind of made up a tool and just basically rubbed them away. I mean what I could do with these is put them in my lathe, make a tool up and just remachine them but you know you don't all have lathes and to be quite honest with you life's too bloody short. And we just shouldn't have to do this crap. It's just so, so annoying that, you know, a designer has even considered doing this in their tooling. You know, clearly, whoever did this, you have never, you have never done any, you've never done anything like this before, have you? You can't have done. It's just, ugh. So please don't bloody do it again. Right, I'm going to carry on and get some work done with these and try and get at least four good ones out of them. And then uh, I'll come back and show you how they look. Okay, so there we are. Not really happy at all, but <clears throat> I might do some more work with them, but we shall see. But um, as you can see there, they're not, uh, they're not ideal, but it's the best we can get, I think. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever seen an ejector pin in a worse position, but let's just stop the moaning, eh? So, um... I'm going to get these bogies attached to the trailer. I've done a lot of painting on the trailer because I've had bits of paint left after doing the wheels and stuff. So I've got these, these bogies are built up. These wheels are going to come off. And what I've done, I've got the inner wheels and I've put the tyres on them, as you can see. So I'm going to take that off so you can see. If you remember, I glued these together a long while back. That's part of my strategy of building, of putting halves together and stuff. So we're able to do all the seams and sand everything out. Fitted the air cylinders, fitted the little end caps on there. I think I talked about that already, didn't I? This is the trouble with making videos over three or four days. You forget what you've said. And it was only 20 minutes ago to you. But to me, it was like 48 hours ago or even more. So um, I'm going to remove some of that paint. I'm going to remove some of this paint from here. Make some chirpy noises. A snug fit. Remove some of the paint from there. An effort to get a stronger joint. And what I'm going to do is build this bogey back up. Okay, just like so. Something else I must show you before we move on. The pin that goes into the um, into the fifth wheel has a shoulder on it. I've sanded that off so that the pin can actually fit down in. Because when you look at the fifth wheel, you'll see that the the, the collar is in there for clamping it, so obviously with the collar in there, the shoulder won't go through. So it's another badly thought out design. I suppose if you wanted to, you could actually have this permanently fixed together, I, I guess. I don't know. I suppose you could fix that. No, you can't because it's too... I don't know. But um, it's just another poor design aspect of this trailer. So anyway, um, I, need, I need to build something that I'm not going to moan about which is going to be very difficult. It's just that that Apache and this, putting them next to each other, it seems like I just moan about everything all the time. I don't, but uh, maybe I am at the moment. So we're going to get these glued on. So I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to use my Tamiya white glue. And I'm going to put some in there. Okay, and then just drop that bogey on. They're not handed. Either side can go on either side. And I'll do the same on this one. Okay, drop that one down in there. If I can find the hole. There we go, that's gone in. Right, now we need to get the lid back on our glue. We need to get the trailer turned over, get it sat on its wheels. And obviously now, to make sure all those wheels sit on the ground, we need to have the front of the trailer at the right height. So we're going to roll that back, and we're going to grab our tractor unit, and that bloody wheel keeps coming off. I wish it bloody well wouldn't. I don't want to glue them on in case somebody comes up with some really nice resin ones that are reasonably priced. 
So make sure this is all on one mat. Make sure the fifth wheel pin is in. There we go, that's in. Make sure all the wheels are on the same mat. And then what we can do is grab some weight. In fact, I won't put both of them, I'll just put one of them on. Stand that on there. We really want it over the middle, don't we? Maybe it would be better to put both of them on. And that will ensure then that those, all those eight wheels are on the ground. We'll just have a quick look up from behind. And we can see that they're all on the ground. That's all nice and steady. So there we are. So, we are good to go. So I'm going to leave that to dry for at least two hours because um, that white glue can take quite a while to go off. Mind you, it is very warm, so it'll probably be gone off in an hour. But I'm going to leave it like that now for at least two hours and then, um, and then we'll come back, take the wheels off and then we can do some more work. So I'll see you uh, in two hours. Right, moving ever forward. <clears throat> Next day now, this is all dry and I've taken the wheels off and the bogies are all nice and solid. I did have to make a slight adjustment on one of them. Um, it was slightly twisted, so what I did was put extra thin in there <clears throat> to dissolve the glue and then just sort of give it a little tweak and measure that up. And what I did to, to check it was good was use a rule on the axle like that so I can see that that one's 15 mil to the middle of the plastic here. So 15 millimeters, 15 millimeters. So that's how I was able to check. That was all good. So that's that done. So looking at the instructions now, we've done all this here. I fitted these boxes off camera because it's just a case of fitting, fitting these two plastic boxes on. I just glued them on, you don't need to see that, do you? Um, and I've made these up there here. These are little oil tanks. You can see the sight glass on the side there. And they um, have a little base that goes in, so I've put some um, super glue in them to fill them. So they're ready to go on. But I'll probably paint the back of those first. Uh, I've glued these bits on here. These are the supports for the spare wheel holder. The kit doesn't come with a spare wheel. I've made resin ones, as you know, so that's going to go on there like that. Um, so going over the page now, we're into Breebly City. So we've got these two air tanks here that are going down. So I'm going to paint those first, obviously, to make sure they're all uh, black all the way around. Um, we've got these little boxes here, which are those two. There's one there, one there. And they are for mounting the spare wheel. And I haven't got these parts A42 off yet. Let's get them off. We've got the wheel halves going together for the spare wheel and obviously the tyres going on. And over here we've got this um, fire extinguisher and this stand. I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it's uh, something or other. Now you can see here that you've got this part here, B46, going on to B16. Now B16 is the mount for the fire extinguisher, which has a little leg on it, and that's going to sit on top of this part here, B46, because you can go together, and they go into a slot in the side of the in the side of the gooseneck there. You can see there's a slot. Well on the other side, there is no slot, so I've actually cut my own it's actually not too bad because you'll find when you put a rule across here it's level with that okay and you can just measure the position and put a slot in there so that it fits in otherwise just cut the tab off and butt join it so I've done that so there's another issue with the kit uh, no slot they're showing a slot there but there isn't one um, another issue I found again with bloody wheels uh, these wheels have got ejector pin marks in them again so thanks but the other thing they've done, they've made a full back for the spare wheel. Who's ever seen a spare wheel that looks like that? As we know, it should look like that. Okay, it's a pressed steel disc, probably welded into a steel rim. Okay, so what I've done is cut that section out and just left the rim in place and then glued it on. And what I'll do there is just go around with a drill. Um, I've got a drill here actually, is that too big? Yeah, that's a bit too big. Um, I'll just get a drill, something like 1.5 or whatever. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll use my little power tool, hang on. Okay, so I know you're all going to ask me, 
Where did I get this? How much was it? Can you provide me a link? Where can I find one? This here is the Janor little power tool. Um, it's made in China and I'm sure there's loads of them the same. It's got a USB point in the back. It charges on the um, on the computer and it's a three speed. So one, two, three. Not a lot of torque and it has got a, a cutout as you can see. So using it on the second speed and I'm just going to go in here with a 1.2mm drill and just drill out a series of holes around here. It doesn't need to be the neatest job in the world. It can just be any old random drilling. It's just chain drilling to make it easier to cut out. On the other one, I actually cut it out and managed to break the rim. So this one might be a little bit tidier actually. So all I've got to do now is use this as a milling cutter and just go around and open up I can't understand how on earth this is staying in here <laughs> There we go, it's coming out There we are. So that's that out of there and I used a 1.2mm drill and I've got a rolled up piece of very coarse emery so I can just go in and sand that out and as I say you're not really going to see much of it it's, it's underneath the it's underneath the mesh and if you've got a tank on there you're not going to see any of it but um, I just think it looks a lot better like that than having that great big lump in there because that's just not accurate at all is it so there's another simple little mod you can do i'm actually i know i keep moaning but i'm actually beginning to think this kit is a little chunk to be honest um especially the trailer so there we go so i'll carry on sanding that get the bench cleaned up because i've made another mess and then that's something else i can show you is my little t who this will get jess barking little t who little vacuum you get them from amazon you can go in and clean up the bench. Normally it gets Jess going, which is obviously not in the room. There we go. That's that done. Right. See you in a minute. Hey, we're back. Um, <clears throat> I've done quite a bit off camera. Well, I tell you I did have the camera switched on for fitting these spare wheels onto the uh, onto the chassis. But I've deleted the video because I think the language would have offended some of you. Uh, fitting those, I found, was a complete nightmare. There's absolutely no location for them at all. You've just got, you can see through the mesh, there's like a, a square plastic block that they go on. And there they are there. And there's this little angle bit on the side. There's nothing else. There's no holes, there's no pins, nothing. So you've got to get in the position, but, you know, in all directions with no guidance whatsoever and you're working looking through this bit of mesh because you can't see them if I were building this kit again I would fit the blocks and then fit the wheels to the blocks rather than the other way around because it would be much easier to see and get them square and everything but yeah that was a complete and utter nightmare now the wheels are done um, I haven't glued the wheels in because I'm not sure how much bulge the tire is going to have but, um, I'm kind of hoping the tire is going to fit. I'm not going to actually fit one. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be quite tight, but I, I, I want to leave the tires off so I can obviously get it painted. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get the tires on afterwards. I should be able to just be pushing rather than pulling. But if I do any pulling, it's going to break it. But hey, hope doesn't matter, does it? Uh, we've got lots of bits and pieces painted here. So we've got the air tanks, those uh, rearward looking lights, obviously for loading at night. Painted them, got them all together, they're all looking good. Uh, it looks like that lens has popped out a bit, so that's a bit of an annoyance. Something is probably going to have to paint it again. Or I'll just put it on the side where that is facing inward so it won't ever be seen. But um, yeah, they're painted up and they're masked off. Um, those boxes there, those tanks, you can see the those, those stand units, they hang upside down. 
and I've also done the fire extinguishers here so that's going to sit on top of there like that so you can see that's going to look quite nice on the side of the truck so they are nice that they're sprayed in LP7 so uh, they'll be nice and glossy it'll be a nice contrast between all the green uh, and I've got a couple of plates here that go on the front of the trailer and that's it um, I've also assembled the wheels I gave the inside a very light dusting with green you can see the improvement now that they're painted green the work on the was a really nice one there's a nice one there the work on the ejector pin marks has played off so they're looking lovely and also open up those holes at the back I think has paid off as well quite why Hobby Boss did that especially with the spare wheels I should never know and also when you look now at your spare wheels you can see you can see through them if I get something white if I get my you can see through the wheels now because they've got holes in them which is a lot more realistic than having a an completely inaccurate great slab plaster to the back anyway so that's that done uh, I've also gone around I've removed all the Hobby Boss stuff from the inside of the roof and filled in some of the ejector pins so it seems to spend most of my life filling ejector pins I should count up how many I've done now because it's just I'm surprised they don't have any on them you know it'd be nice to have an ejector pin mark right in the side of one of them wouldn't it <laughs> but so uh, anyway um right stop moaning I've got another kit I've ordered uh which I may well be building Luke over at um Black Rifle Model Works has just announced a group build for um for the 1st of July to the end of this, I think it's the end of the 1st of July to the end of the year, I think. Um, and it's Elizabethan, so you can build any model of a subject from Elizabethan times. So, um, from the, you know, the time that uh, Queen Elizabeth was, was in, in reign. Uh, so, reign, should I say. So I'm going to, um, I've ordered a kit, it's on its way. Um, hopefully it'll be here before the 1st of July. And I've asked Luke if I'm allowed to. Can I do a video build series of a kit that I'm building in his group build? I, I can't see why not, so maybe he will have answered by now, I don't know. But um, today, by the way, is the 24th of June, 2023. So, um, yeah, it's like a few days after they've discovered that the, the poor guys on that Titan did lose their lives. You can tell how long I've been making this video now. So I think I'm going to call it a day there because it's just going on and on and on. Um, you really don't, I mean, you might want to see these wheels, how they look when they're actually fitted. There we go. So you can see how they look when they're fitted. They look a lot better, don't they, than the, than the horrible bloody blanked off things. Um, and all the ejector pin marks gone. I didn't bother with the ejector pin marks on the spare wheels. I was too short. I'm fed up with dealing with ejector pin marks. So um, there we go. Uh, so, yeah, I will, um, I'm going to call that a day there. I'll be back for part 11 uh, and I guess in part 11 we'll finish the trailer. I could keep going now but all I'm going to be doing is fitting those air tanks, fitting these bits. There's nothing really much for you to see, nothing you're going to learn from. And we've got all these other bits and pieces of greeblies going on. We've got the, the um, cat, not cat, uh, block and tackle, block, yeah, whatever, um, pulley block, that's what it's called. And then we're going to be doing on the ramp. So when I come back for part 11, uh, we'll get on and do the ramps and everything and we'll see if we can have those operable I'm not sure if they're supposed to be chains on them also got to get this this PE on the side there. that's going to be a nightmare that's going to keep wanting to come peel off and then we're done so we're, we're only um I mean that is pretty much done I'm obviously not doing the lights yet because I'm waiting for the Edward set to come it, it seems to be that no one's got that it, 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 everyone in the world has it except for the UK it's really crazy um, I might end up ordering one direct from Edward but it's the bloody postage but I think this is going to get stalled because I'm waiting for that set to arrive. Um, but anyway, never mind. That'll be this one and the Apache stalled, waiting for other stuff to come. So, uh, anyway, I'll see you all soon for part 11. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please click on my little face down here and subscribe. And uh, if you've liked the video, please give us a thumbs up because it all helps, apparently. So I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.